You know we're living in some very odd and disturbing times when we got biological men out here arguing in dresses. Hi, Michael. My name is Demi. Um, in the recent past, you've advocated for the outright eradication of transgenderism from public life with the claim that the supposed right of confused people to pretend to be the opposite sex necessarily infringes on your right to distinguish between men and women. I'm, start sorry. I'm standing here now, a biological male, wearing a dress with a pair of leggings, do you sincerely believe that I should be subject to punitive justice on the basis of what I'm wearing? And if so, are you willing to turn yourself in for wearing women's panties in your gay college film? <laughs> well, uh, I'll take those questions in order, I guess. Uh, the first one, I, I would encourage you to, to behave as a man, is what I would do. Because you, you are a man, and I don't know how exactly you came to the point where you think you're a woman or very much would like to be a woman. But you aren't, and I don't think anyone who is uh, affirming your delusion is helping you. I don't think that they're actually an ally of, of yours. I think they're lying to you, and I think it's very disrespectful, and I think it will not lead to your flourishing. I think it will only immiserate you. And so uh, you, you might hate me for telling you the truth, but I think the truth will set you free. And furthermore, your masquerading as a woman does infringe on the legitimate rights of other people, the rights of women to have their own bathrooms. I don't know if you're an athlete. I'm not much of an athlete myself, but the rights of uh, women to have their own sports leagues and the like. That, that is not something that you have a right to do, no matter how sincerely you believe the fantasy that you are a woman. Uh, as to that Yale thesis film, this thing dogs me. <laughs> you know, back in my wayward youth, I was, I was never a, a transvestite or a homosexual or anything, but I was something even more morally suspect. I was a professional actor. And... <laughs> And uh, I played 200 roles, I would estimate, in my acting career. Soldiers, football players, real macho guys. But you play one half gay guy in a Yale thesis film one time. It's all anybody wants to talk about. And by the way, I don't remember the exact wardrobe from that uh, undergraduate thesis film. But I, I think it was male uh, attire, but it was a bit, it was a bit uh, risque. There's no question about that. Uh, the only further thing I will say about that Yale undergraduate thesis film that is the most heterosexual thing that has ever been produced at Yale University, okay? <laughs> so, in the land of the blind, I guess, the one-eyed man is king. In any case, I think your second question was a little bit more of a joke. Uh, your first question, it, it seems like a sincere question, and my answer to you is, is sincere. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any more questions you have, but I'm not going to lie to you, and I, and I think the people who who are continuing to lie to you about so basic an aspect of your nature and the rights that you have in political society are not doing you any favors at all. So, so having yearned for the, uh, for the days when it was illegal to cross-dress in San Francisco, I'm just very curious why you're so comfortable you know, wearing drag in these films. It's, it's, a, it's a really silly... <laughs> sure, silly, you know, it's a silly I, I was an actor and I wore silly costumes. I don't know what okay. to tell you. If you, have a, if you have a sincere question about the issue or my stance on transgenderism or, you know, any advice that you might be seeking, I'm happy to do it. But if, uh, if you merely want to say that Yale is a bit of a queer school and, you know, I was in a student film, uh, I, I guess I was, and I was basically the most macho guy at that school. What does that tell you about Yale University? <laughs> When you harp on your right to distinguish between men and women, are you afraid that you're going to be attracted to trans women? I'm not. <laughs> you sir? Are you positive? Say, say it again. I didn't hear the second part. Then why is it that, why is it that you harp on the dis your right to distinguish between men and women? If you can always tell, why is, it, why is it so hard? Well, because it's not even merely that you're putting on a dress. It's that y you and people who identify as transgender are... Uh, infringing upon rights and spaces that properly belong to women, and you have no right to do that. And so when you ask me, oh, why do you care about this issue? And not, by the way, it's not just me. It's like the vast majority of voters who care about this. Uh, the reason is because we live in society, and we have political rights, and also because we care for the truth. And the, the very fact that this always happens with the sexual revolutionaries. They always say, you know, if you uh, oppose... If, if you don't agree with the idea that a man can secretly be a woman, then maybe you're a transgender or something. I think the implication is, is, 
is quite clear, which is that you recognize there's something obviously disordered about, about this identity. That's why in, in your attempt to insult people who are pointing out the truth, you're accusing them of that very same thing. But, but that in, in, inclination, that impulse to, to see that as a disorder should be instructive to you. And I, I think it could, it could help you if, if you would allow yourself not to just cast it on someone else, but to look in the mirror. Uh, if you ever want to explore your true self, my Instagram is at Demi Gloom, D-E-M-I-G-L-O-O-M. Thank you so much. I'll have to take a rain check. <laughs> don't get it twisted. People like me and Michael Knowles, we don't call out all of this trans evil because we're hating on somebody. No, 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 no. That's not the reason we do it at all. We do it because real men are supposed to protect their wives and their daughters from all of this predatory, perverted confusion that's going on. And I can only speak for myself, but I can promise you I am definitely not afraid of being attracted to trans anything. God blessed me with a beautiful, smoking hot wife, so no thank you. I only got eyes for her shaved legs and a dress. And maybe this is where we disagree agree, but Jesus taught me to love my neighbor as myself. In that Bible, that basic instructions before leaving earth, real love requires being transparent and keeping it real with folks when they're messing up, when they're doing wrong and straying off path of the one and only righteous path. And trying to transform is a big no-no. For someone to go against what God beautifully and perfectly formed them together as in their mama's womb is basically saying that he got it wrong. Uh, negative, God is perfect and he's right all the time. So Nope, can't do that. And God also said in Genesis 1 verse 28 to be fruitful and multiply. That's what he instructed us to do. And last time I checked, only a biological man and biological woman can make a baby and produce a new life. So to the homosexual crowd that has things twisted, only men and women are supposed to be together in marriage and, and through that covenant. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2 says, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. Hebrews 13 verse 4 goes on to say, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. So when I see someone living a lie, I'm not about to affirm and play along with their sin to make them feel good about it because I don't want them to wind up in hell come judgment day. Just like I wouldn't want someone to just sit on the sidelines and watch me mess up as an imperfect person myself because we all do make mistakes. I recognize that. There's a big difference though. Some people feel bad and convicted about their sin. Other people promote it and glorify it and live in it. And as Michael Knowles mentioned in the video, I have to reiterate what Jesus says in John 8, the truth will set you free. Speaking from experience, as someone who was saved from over two decades of a filthy sin-filled life of being a scumbag, treating women like objects, all the nasty things that you can imagine that a lot of y'all have probably done, I can absolutely a thousand percent confirm firm that it will, that the truth will set you free. And once you repent and start abiding in God's word with complete faith in Christ to guide you, there's no dysphoria, there's no lustful desires, no depression or anxiety, not even death itself can get in the way of having eternal salvation. Will you be tempted? Absolutely. But God will always provide you a way out with that Holy Spirit in you because Jesus beat every wicked kind of darkness when he went to the cross for all of us. So my prayer is that every lost soul, every man and woman fighting a spirit battle against Satan, I pray that you and anyone out here that hasn't yet comes to Jesus and steps into the righteous life that God created us all for. This world and all the desires that people crave, the materialistic things and sexual desires and deviance that people think is going to give them fulfillment and peace and all of that, none of that stuff is going to ever live up to the hype. It's all passing away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Amen? So let's continue to speak out and speak boldly and help these folks like this. Demi, the guy from the video, let's get fathers and bold leaders back in these kids' homes so that hopefully a lot more rebellion like what we see going on today gets prevented and we can put that to a stop. And no matter what demonic values that this woke, godless society is idolizing and promoting and glorifying, we need to take heart. We need to remain strong with the full arm of the Lord on at all times and know that the best is yet to come when Jesus Christ returns someday. So, 
That's really all I got. And I'd love to hear what you think about all this. I know that was a long, passionate tangent. That's just how we roll over here in case you're new, but get used to it. Drop a comment below if you made it to this point in the video. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. If you like what I'm doing over here and you want to show a little extra love and support, make sure you go check out our website down below in the description section. That way you can get all the awesome shirts you see me wearing in every single video. They're all made by my beautiful wife. This one says created with with a purpose it has it on the chest and on the sleeve it's based on ephesians 2 verse 10 i like mine a little baggy so it seems a little extra room to move and groove but we got all different sizes ranging from itty bitty extra small to big big and hefty 5x a bunch of colors different designs all of that i'm sure you could find something that you like or a great gift for someone that you love outside of that you can always join the gibson family here on youtube and become a member you can buy me a coffee you can join the patreon family all those links are down below as well by no means do you have to do any of that just showing up and allowing my freckle face to rant at you for a few minutes. I am greatly appreciative. I love y'all. I cannot thank you enough. Until next time, I'll be praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.